that means you go backwards through time relative to the rest of the universe into the past. Um, no. Today we're going to be looking at another one of Kurt Gazat's videos. Specifically, we traveled back in time, now physicists are angry. <laughs> As an engineer, I fully endorse that. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. You're going forward through time one second every second. Congratulations, you're a time traveler. True. A bit lame, but let's start here to get to the fun of real time travel to ride on dinosaurs and high five Einstein. Time isn't really a thing that passes, but a dimension, a direction you can move in. We think our universe is four dimensional with three spatial and one time dimensions smooshed together into a fancy thing we call space time. Just like in most things, the arrow of time is a pretty key concept in nuclear physics as well. It points forward, it's based on the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entropy or disorder in a system tends to increase over time, the simplified version of that anyway, and therefore nuclear decay, the decay of radioisotopes, is irreversible, only going one direction. So if you change that, if you could change that, what would that look like? Backwards decay, where a substance increases over time, nuclear accumulation, it's pretty silly. What you experience as time passing and your life happening is actually you moving through the time dimension. And this dimension is a bummer. While you can go forward, backward, left and right, up and down in the space. It's a problem with it being one dimensional and an arrow, so a one direction, one dimensional. Not even a time line, which would imply you could go either direction. These dimensions, in time, you can only go forward. You only get older, never younger. You can't make detours. But this is an illusion. You have far more control over how you move through time. To explain how this actually works, without making a maths video, we have to make a lot of physicists grumpy. So please keep in mind that we're simplifying and lying a bit. Mmm, okay, yeah. I'm wondering how they're gonna get themselves out of this one. Okay, so there's a very strange rule. Everything in our universe moves at the speed of light through four-dimensional space-time. Your speed through space-time is the sum of your separate speeds through time and space. I mean, thus far they haven't broken anything yet because they're just talking about resultant forces with the with putting vectors together, which is no different than moving. It's impossible for you to stay still. Even if you're not moving through space dimensions, you're moving through the time dimension, blasting yes. face first into the future. And let's not even get into the whole frame of reference saying, well, if you're still... You might be still relative to your position in the Earth, but the Earth is spinning, the Earth is moving through space, so it's possible to be still in space relative to something, but not at all relative to time. You can slow down in the time dimension by moving faster through the space dimensions, but in total, you will always move at the speed of light through space-time. If you could somehow truly stand still in space, you'd still move through time at the speed of light, and the other way round. Photons, light particles, move at the speed of light through space. They don't experience any time passing because their speed in that time dimension is zero. In the time dimension, they're frozen in place. One key thing to clarify is they're referring to speed of light in a vacuum. It is possible to travel faster than light if you slow down light. And I'm not talking, and I'm not even, and time isn't even a part of this. The speed of light through water is reduced to about two-thirds of C. High-energy charged particles such as electrons can travel between two-thirds C and one C. So you can go faster than light if you slow it down. After all, that's where the cool blue glowy thingy comes from. If you see light on Earth, from the photon's perspective, it was just on the surface of the sun and then suddenly crashed into your eye with nothing happening in between. Remember, we're telling a science story here. In real life, things are more complicated. Sure. For one, it's impossible to truly stand still. I do at least like that they're that they admit that they're doing simplification. There's enough crazy AI-generated rubbish out there that 
just says things without mentioning it's a simplification. Some of those being outright misinformation. Relative to space itself, you can only be standing still relative to other things in space. And you yes. can't really define a reference frame for photons as we just did. For details, check out our sources. Ooh, that's a whole can of worms right there. A photon is a particle of light, keeping in mind that light can sometimes act as a wave rather than a particle. But a photon always goes at the speed of light, so there is no rest frame of reference. That's just not a thing. It's a constant speed. It always goes approximately 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, regardless of the position of the observer, according to Einstein's theory of special relativity. And just as they said earlier, the time between the two points that a photon's traveling to, based on that frame of reference, is zero, and the distance is also zero, due to the, pre due to the principles of time dilation and length contraction. And you would get other contradictory results, such as infinite energy and undefined physics for anything that has mass. So I can see why they mentioned now physicists are angry in the title. But now, back to our story. Okay, story. so everything in the universe moves at the same breathtaking speed, but this speed is split between space and time which leads to all sorts of wacky things, and where we can see time travel. Like the inclusion of bananas, which a lot of people know are radioactive, and can even contain trace amounts of antimatter from the decay of potassium-40. So if we do weird things with this arrow of time, we could synthesize antimatter back into regular matter? That's what it implies. <laughs> Happen. Real and easy time travel. When a bus drives past you, it's moving a little bit faster through space than you are. Sure. So, it moves slower through time than you. Or, how it's usually worded, the bus is moving slower through time relative to you. That's true, but your speeds are so close and so far away from light, I wouldn't. I wouldn't get on a bus to age more slowly. <laughs> Things like that only happen at relativistic speeds that you would observe maybe a tiny bit greater than 10% the speed of light, but a lot more greater than 90% the speed of light. While this makes things feel like weird physics magic, it's very simple. <laughs> move faster through space, <clears throat> go slower in time. Move slower through space, go faster in time. And if you add another person moving way faster or slower than you, both end up traveling different distances in the time dimension. The pretty fundamental concept, because speed times time equals distance. The story that's usually told to demonstrate this is to get twins, force one of them into a rocket against their will, shoot them through space super fast while the other twin... That horrible, sad expression, you monsters. ...chills on Earth. And because one twin moves very fast through space, while the other moves slowly on Earth, they move at different speeds through time. When the rocket finally gets home, they're no longer the same age, and the younger space twin is ready to start years of therapy for being abducted by theoretical physicists. Basically, the plot of that newer Buzz Lightyear movie. They even had the little suit on one of the twins. This is the twin paradox, and it makes perfect sense within the rules of the universe. If you want to learn more about the paradoxes of time, we made a video about it. But in a nutshell, you're using time dilation. The fact that your position in time is subjective and only true for yourself. True. With sufficiently fast rockets, you could get as far as you want into the future. The big thing is, it's all effectively the same, unless you're going really fast. Technically, this way you can witness the end of the universe or look at the final thing that will ever happen. We also made videos about that. We should mention that there's another way to jump forward in time. Massive objects bend space-time, causing time to go slower near them. On Earth, the effect is tiny. The gravity of our planet makes time pass 0.0000007% slower than in deep space. Let me guess, they're going to talk about rotating black holes next. Far from any gravitational fields. Hardly useful for time travel, but it's a start. If you move into a really strong gravitational field, like around a black hole, the closer there you get comes. to the event horizon, the slower time passes for you. If we kidnap our twin again, they won't notice it at all. Their watch ticks as fast as it always does. But from the outside, they seem to almost stand still. Only when the twin leaves the gravitational field and comes back to Earth, do they realize they time traveled. And again, just like the plot of the Buzz Lightyear movie. 
OK, so you can time travel to the future by going fast or near a black hole. But this is pretty lame and has literally only downsides, except for people who want to sort of teleport into the future. You can't go backwards, though. And it makes building a gigantic human space empire super hard, because even if we develop the technology to go really super fast between stars, going on a faraway journey will always mean leaving your home as you knew it forever. Not to mention this whole black hole thing has never actually been proven because we haven't ever done that with the black hole. Forget physicists being angry, now writing in engineers that actually have to figure out how to do this. <laughs> but now that we know all of this, there's actually a way we could use the rules of our universe to travel backwards through time. The past is a faraway land. Let's go far, there. Far away. So you always move through space-time at the speed of light. If you go fast through the space dimension, you slow down in the time dimension. And here we find an actual opening for backwards time travel. The theory of relativity, which may be the most solid scientific theory we know, does not forbid faster than light motion through space. If you move through the space dimension faster than the speed of light, superluminal, you need to move... What's interesting is I've never actually heard the term just luminal. I've only heard it as superluminal. ...through the time dimension with negative speed. That means you go backwards through time relative to the rest of the universe into the past. Um, no. Or should I say maybe not? But even if this law were to hold true, which a big if when you're introducing faster than light, which may or may not even be possible with with theoretical particles such as tachyons, I don't see how it would necessarily mean you're going backwards in time. It would just depend on your frame of reference. Just like when you're moving normally, that is to say slower than light in space, you're going forward in some frame of references, backwards in another frame of reference. You could be going forward in time in one frame of reference, backwards in another, and stationary in another and that's all assuming that that principle holds true and i have doubts that it does because of the causality principle which states that cause precedes effect if you could go faster than light backward in time you could say receive a message before it is sent which is a violation now the causality principle could be wrong but it's just something we have yet to observe but let's say all of this is true the going backwards in time part and the faster than light backwards in time would you actually go to the past or would it be a different branching timeline at that point, because saying you're going, because those are different. Going back to the past implies everything is going to play out exactly the same way as it did. But merely going backwards in time would violate that because you going backwards in time would change things. Unless, of course, it already happened. And then you get into time paradoxes. Actually, scientists have been looking for superluminal particles and given them a name. Tachyons. <laughs> there we go. They could exist and would have wild properties like getting faster when they lose energy and, of course, traveling backwards in time. Finally, real time travel. They've been looking for, but there's no evidence they actually exist. I mean, after all, they would have to have imaginary mass. Just like with photons, it isn't really possible to clearly define how time passes for tachyons themselves. It depends on how you move through space-time relative to them. But now, for the <laughs> first time, some observers could actually see tachyons literally traveling backwards in time. For the first time? Oh, they're implying you do this crazy backwards in time, faster than light shenanigans. At least I think that's what they mean. They're not saying somebody's actually observed tachyons, right? Because that would be groundbreaking. Which means they could be used to directly interact with the past. In theory, you could use them to send messages to your past self and change all sorts of things that have already happened. And since you're changing things that have already happened, basically you're changing the future and creating a completely different timeline. Maybe with some tachyon-powered sci-fi future tech, you could see a star die before it was born, meet your great-grandparents, prevent your past self from making that one dumb mistake. See, that's what's interesting. You could even, like, prevent yourself from dying in an accident or something like that, which would just create a different timeline. So would you actually get brought back to life? And that put places us firmly in the realm of time paradoxes. Win the lottery or get eaten by dinosaurs and create <laughs> juicy time paradoxes that also kind of break the universe. Yep.
Oh, what's that? Right. Hmm. It seems there are things in our universe that are impossible to mix. Okay, they brought up they brought up causality and relativity. Okay. Unfortunately, the theory of relativity specifically forbids anything that starts out traveling slower than the speed of light to reach the speed of light. Because moving faster through space requires energy, and the energy required to reach the speed of light is literally infinite. Even if you could gather all the energy of the... So the reason why tachyons are theoretical is because they could actually start off going faster than light, and they never cross the plane that is C. But if they do exist, we can't observe them because they're going faster than light. And in that case, their lower speed limit would be the speed of light. Universe, you couldn't accelerate a grain of sand to the speed of light. You can get as close as you like, but you can never reach it. It is possible. It'd break apart long before you reach it anyway. <laughs> to move at the speed of light as photons do, but they always move at the speed of light. Yeah, they can't If you not move, move superluminally, you will always move superluminally. And sadly, so far, we don't have the tiniest bit of evidence that tachyons exist. Yeah. While they work on paper, most scientists think they're not real. So for now, it seems that time travel into the past is... And the whole work on paper thing, you could um, theorize the existence of, I don't know, a 10,000 dimensional object and hand it to a mathematician and they'd be like, okay, but we haven't observed one. Strictly impossible, no matter how hard we try. The past is a faraway land, and while we can look at it in pictures and movies and our memories, it's locked away, forever outside of our reach. Well, they Unless our current understanding of physics is wrong, that's the only thing you can hope for. After all, in 1895, Lord Kelvin infamously said that heavier-than-air flying machines were impossible. Note that he mentioned heavier-than-air because hot air balloons have already existed for quite some time. And yet, in less than 10 years, the Wright brothers flew the first airplane. This is another example of something that I hope we're wrong about, but from what we can tell now, it's not looking good for FTL. Trip. It's not looking good for backwards time travel. This is sad. It leaves you with the most important time there is. Right now, the moment <laughs> where you actually exist and a future that's yours to forge. If you want, you could even time travel to it. Time travel to the future at a rate of one second per second. I'm glad they cleared up that this was high level stuff without involving a ton of math. Though I will say engineers are probably more frustrated than physics that you can't do it because of how many problems you could solve with it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.